People think that it's okay to watch. Can I get some tissue real quick? People think it's okay to watch church service on television and, and, and via Facebook, YouTube. But see, there are things that the camera can't pick up. See, the camera can't pick up when the Holy Ghost walks in. See, the camera can't pick up when the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous go forth. So for all of you that are at home and you, you're in bed or you're on the couch or wherever you are, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I have to throw this in. You a fool for missing this. If, if you have allowed the enemy to tell you you're not missing anything by being at Bedside Baptist, you a fool. Because see, that, that, that this camera is facing this way. But the action is out here. I, I Lady Mariah, I, I, I wonder if they had a full panoramic view of the service. I wonder would they be breaking down the door to get in. Do you hear me, Miss Yolanda? Who go ahead and be seated in his presence. My God. Yes, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. You deserve it. You deserve it. Jesus. My God, my God, my God. I, Lady Keita, I don't know if I want to scream, if I want to run. Ba baby Carter, can you just let out a yell for Pastor over there? <laughs> just let out a scream for Pastor. Can you do that for me, Carter? He watching his daddy. I guess we got the next generation of drummer players. Amen. Between him and CJ. We won't have to hire a drummer player for a few years. Huh? Oh, my God. Y'all excuse me. I, I got runny nose, runny eyes. Just don't y'all do that to me. See, you, you, you cannot provoke the presence of God. You cannot provoke the presence of God around people that have expectations. You feel me? I heard a preacher say one time that it's the breeding ground for miracles. You can't put the power of God. Oh, Jesus. 
Mel, I feel like I'm bursting at the seams this morning. I was. Jesus. 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 My God, my God. It feels like the day of Pentecost in here. Like something's about to fall in this place. See, they say the veil was rent from the top to the bottom. It bail all it takes is one cracking in the spirit, and something will begin to break. Oh, Jesus. I'm trying to hold it together this morning, people of God. I'm trying to hold it together. Yes, God. Give him glory, mother. Give him glory. Give him glory. He deserves it. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. asking God I say God where do you want us to go in the word what is the word for your people and he took me to Acts chapter 1 and I said God I said this is this is the beginning of the entrance of the Holy Ghost he said yes but no. I said, what do you mean, God? I said, they sat in the upper room and they, they waited. They sat in the upper room and they waited on the Holy Spirit. I said, God, they waited. Waited for the Holy Spirit. He said, No, they didn't. He said, They didn't wait for the Holy Spirit. He said, They waited on my promise. What has God promised you? What has God promised you? the day of Pentecost. And they were waiting on the Father's promise. But before his promise could be manifested, there had to be a breaking That there had to be a, a shifting. Y'all get what I'm saying? 
there, there had to be something in order for him, the Holy Spirit, to come forth in that room with them. That means all flesh had to be put on the back burner. All pride, all arrogance. Are you getting what I'm saying? You had a room filled with people, with human existence. But before he could make his introduction, they had to put themselves aside. Now listen to what, to what I'm saying. Before the promise could be made manifest, there had to be a breaking. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? Some of us cannot be released until there's a breaking in our lives. And this is the thing that God told me to tell you this morning. Don't worry about the breaking. Worry about the promise. Because that's what we're after. What has God promised you, Mom? Brown? Mr. Lavelle, what has he promised? I heard him say he was adding years to you, man of God. I heard him say that. What has God promised you? Mel, I'm here this morning to remind you. What has God promised? See, Coop, you got to understand that we, 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 we go through things in life and, and, and it feels as though those, those things are crushing us. They're, they're, they're breaking us. But before you can get to the yoke, you got to crack the egg. What he's trying to get to is inside you. My God. He wants to manifest his promises. God does not say things just to say it. He is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should have to repent for it. If he says it, it has to come forth. But he said, wait for the promise. Some of us have outran our promise. And if you have, just stop and wait. Some of us are still waiting and we're looking. Where is it? Where's the promise? Wait. Are, are you hearing me? Because some of you want to give up on your promise. God spoke discipleship ministries to me and it was 10 years. Lady Shalana had forgot about discipleship ministries. Had forgotten about the vision, the promise. And 10 years later, he manifested. Amen. Brim, I wasn't thinking about discipleship ministries at that point. I was ready to go on to something else. But he manifests his promise. I'm here this morning because God has made each and every one of you a promise. And he wants to bring that. Are you, are you listening to me, Lady Matthews? He wants to bring that promise back up. Look at this. He wants to remind you so you can remind him. Yeah. I'm up here with, with, with running eyes and a snotty nose and y'all missed that. He will regurgitate his promise because he wants you to speak his. See, you can't say, I'm waiting on the Lord and you ain't doing nothing. That's not waiting on the Lord. See, if I'm waiting on the Lord, I'm serving him. Yeah. Even, even before the promise come. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying this morning, people yeah. of God? This is your message. Dig that promise up. Because God made some promises, Coop. And he's going to hold true to them. Please, don't let my snotty nose be in vain up here. Come on, y'all know how I am about appearances. <laughs> y'all got me out here bad today. Bring that promise. What did he promise you, Mel? What did he What did he promise you, Lady Pew? What did he promise you? God made some promises to us. Now, I know he's good for them, but some of us have forgotten them, and some of us have put them on the back burner. And God said, every time you do that, you shorten me.
because I cannot manifest my glory in the earth if you are not allowing me to manifest my promises to you. If I said I'm going to make you a millionaire and you still walking around broke, you making me look bad. Are you getting it? His word. He speaks his word over our lives. He's promised us some things. I don't know about anybody in this room. I need to cash in. Do you feel me? I need to cash in on every promise he made. I do not want to die and a promise die with me. Can you imagine dying and God's blessing dying with you? The devil is a liar, mother. I will not forfeit. I will not forfeit the promises of God. Amen? Amen. Go back. Go back in your Rolodexes. Go back in your notebooks. Some of you wrote things down as God was speaking. Go back and pull it back up. Trust me. If God is remind, reminding you of the promise, it's because it's time to manifest it. Are you listening to me? He wouldn't, be remi he wouldn't say remind, remind them of the promise if he wasn't about to do something. Are you hearing me, people of God? Timing. You know how they say location, location? Timing is everything. If you plant a seed out of season, it's just a planted seed. But at the right timing. Do I have any, 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 any planters, any horticulture people in here? If you plant that seed at the right time, you'll see the harvest of it. Collect on your promises, people of God. Facebook, are you listening to me? Collect on your promises. God made them to us. Y'all sitting like, God ain't made me no promise. If he didn't promise you nothing, he promised you 60 plus 10. I want my 70. And if you don't want yours, I'll take them too. My God. What has he promised you? What has he promised you? Health, wealth, prosperity. See, there's blessings that... See, all we look at with Christianity is the persecution we go through. Oh, we go through trials and tribulations, but there are blessings that come with it. Some of you got raises on jobs that you, 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 you know you've been late every day for the last two years, but you can't stop his blessings. <laughs> Is he late? <laughs> Mel started laughing when I said that. Is he late? <laughs> but you still got the blessing. You, are you getting what I'm saying? You didn't even deserve a promotion. But some kind of way, your name worked. Why? Because he promised you prosperity. He promised you that what that wherever your feet tread, the land that your feet tread upon, you'll possess it. Wherever, whatever your hands touch. Come on, that's promises. What has he promised to you? What has he promised you, Coop? Go back and grab those promises. But see, it's those promises that he made in the past that are going to carry you into your future. Think about it. It was a promise of discipleship ministries 10 years ago that is taking me into my future. But I had to act upon it. Well, y'all hear me this morning, people of God. What has God promised you? He said, wait for the promise. Wait for the promise. See, see, I'm already filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't have to wait on that promise. But there's some other things I'm waiting on. Are y'all getting it this morning? Yeah. Glory to God. I, I, I noticed the last few Sundays we, we come in and, and the worship. <laughs> My God. Jesus. I didn't even want to come to the podium today. You had it. Woman of God, you were ministering. That's why I didn't come to the podium. For what? 
I pulled up. I saw, I, I saw, I think it was Deacon Brim out there. I saw all these preachers in here. I know they got this. They just throw the mic in the air and somebody jump up and catch it and run with it. Amen. Lady Tom act like she wanted to preach this morning. Amen. Amen. Hold on to the promises. I forgot what God has spoken to me, Mother. Ten years passed. I moved on from, from uh, uh, medical collections to, to real estate to, and all of a, all of a sudden, this is the time. What? This is the time. God, hold on. This was ten years ago. You should have said this when, when things were better, <laughs> when I was better. <laughs> this is the time. But hold on, God, I got issues. Why you ain't do this when I was saved for real? This is the time. See, you got to understand when his promise is manifested, he, <laughs> he didn't care that I wasn't ready. You better get ready. Because it was time. Now, if, if I wouldn't have positioned myself, guess what? I would have missed the opportunity. I probably would have had to wait another 10 years for DMI to come forth. But when he said, this is the time I positioned myself, I asked him, I said, God, I said, God, I got issues. I said, how am I going to get these issues off? And he said, walk in my word and anything not like me will fall off. Yeah. Plain and simple. Yeah. Plain and simple. Walk in my word and everything like me will fall off. Not like me will fall off. I said, oh, he don't know the issues I got. He said, oh, yes, I do. He knows it. He know I jacked up y'all off. See, he didn't got me straight. I ain't jacked up no more. <laughs> he knows. He knows your issues. He knows your concerns. Trust me. And he knows the promises that he made. And he's standing there like, you remember the little kids who play double dutch? And they just kind of rock with it, waiting to jump in? He's waiting because he knows it's your season. He knows it's your time. And he's waiting on you. And all you got to do is just, mm, my God. Tell him, come on and jump in, God. Just jump in anytime you want to. Jump into my situation. Jump into my finances. Jump it. Oh, my God, my God, my God. I tell you this. God had already spoken before I got up here. Yes. My God. Because the true worshipers worship in spirit and in truth. And, and here's the thing. When you got true worshipers in the room, it ain't hard. All you need is one good true worshiper. And he, whoo, he'll take the rest of us in. My, you were the one true worshiper this morning. All she had to do was lead the way. And we just go on in with her. Jesus. Jesus. And somebody sounded the alarm. Awesome prayer, Elder. Awesome prayer. Do, do y'all see how all this works together? There's a flow in church. And I know I'm all off topic. There's a flow in church. And when that flow, when that flow is right, the Holy Ghost can come in. When the people are ready to praise and to worship he can just walk in, and he can minister as needed. It's amazing. You can have 40 people in the room, and the Holy Ghost can walk in and speak to each one of us. My God. He can whisper something in your ear and, and whisper it in my ear and whisper it in Mother Brenda's ear at the same time. Did you hear that? My God, that's the that's the God I serve. Jesus. My God. Remind him of the promises. Because he's waiting on you to remind him. Matter of fact, he's reminding you by waiting on you to remind him. That's how God works. Remember, I told you how he, he'll, he'll put a desire in your heart so that you can ask him for it, so that he can manifest it for you. That's, 
you, you ever want something all of a sudden? Like, where did I get this from? All of a sudden, I wanted to drive a Maserati. I had never sat in a Maserati before in my life. All of a sudden, a desire. Where does that come from? How do you desire something you've never does that make sense? It sounded like Solomon. So Solomon knew the names and, and, and things about plants and animals that he had never seen before. Never. Plants from the other side of the world. They would bring it to Solomon and Solomon would examine it and could tell them what it was. Jesus. Anyway. The promises of on the day of Pentecost, they were waiting for the promise, which was the Holy Ghost. Wait on your promise, people of God. But while you're waiting, remind him. Remind him of every promise that he made, the promises he spoke over you and your children, and even your children's children. Amen? Amen. Just stand on your feet. Let me bless you before we get ready to go. Play something soft. <laughs> and, and I said that of children's children because God, God makes promises to us through our grandkids. You, you with me, Lady Matthews, man? Be, because you, you're two grandbabies. It's, it's obvious that there's a calling on, on uh, Anibani and uh, Serenity's life. And I'm pretty sure God has spoken something to you concerning. Hold him to his promise. Bring that promise back up. Write it down. And every so often, bring it back up to God. You know, someone may say, well, you, you can't throw God's word up in his face. But he wants you to bring it back to him. He said, my word cannot return unto me void. So in other words, when you bring it back, it's coming back alive. It's coming back full. It's coming back to perform what he sent it out to do. Plain and simple. Just look at the person next to you and tell them, wait on your promise. Just wait on your promise. Now, Father God, we give you the honor and the glory. And we magnify your holy name. Father, this here, your people. I speak blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings, upon blessings, upon each and every one of them. Father, anoint them from the top of their heads to the sole of their feet. Crown their head with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father God, let there be such, such a, a residue of your presence upon this people, Father God, that, that it will open doors that no man can open, and it will close doors that no man can close. And Father, sit them at the table with, with kings and queens and generals and princesses. Perform every promise. Manifest every promise that you've spoken to this people. Just like your word cannot return to you void. It will not fall short unto us. Thank you, Father. We thank you. Thank you for your love and kindness. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your gentleness. In Jesus' name, amen. Just give God a hand, praise.